Greetings, greetings, Internet. It's Wes Clark. My ride today is going to take me to Strasburg, Virginia, which is at the northern end of the Shenandoah Valley, the historic and beautiful Shenandoah Valley. From there, I'll stop, rest a little bit. I'm heading along I-66, so it'll take me a little over an hour to get there. And then I propose to head out to the famous Corridor H in West Virginia, at least the eastern part of it, which is from the Virginia line to whenever I get bored and decide to turn around. So that's today's trip. The weather is beautiful. Perfect motorcycling day. I wasn't planning to go to the Civil War site, but what the heck? I've never been to Huff's Hill, whatever Huff's Hill is. All right, here I am at the Huff's Hill Battlefield site. It's a park in Strasburg. It took me, oh, about an hour and 15 minutes to get here. I think I'm about 70 miles from home. Huff's Hill. Part of a 1,000 acre estate begun by George F. Hupp in the 1750s. Hupp's Hill and the buildings further south were used as headquarters by Federal Generals Nathaniel Banks and James Shields during Stonewall Jackson's 1862 Valley Campaign. The site was first fortified by Confederate forces in 1863. Yes, this is a Virginia pine, as the sign indicates. It is one of the ugliest pine trees you will ever see. There's no greenery at all on the bottom. And then as you go up, there's where all the needles are. As you can see, maybe it is coniferous, but that is a Virginia pine. There's a famous photograph of Ulysses S. Grant leaning against one. Signal knob. Directly ahead of you is Massanutten Mountain. Its highest point on the northern tip, Signal Knob, served as a strategic observation post and signal station for both sides during the Civil War. A war dispatch from Strasburg reached Richmond within an hour by using wigwags, signal flags, to send a message from Signal Knob to successive signal stations along the length of Massanutten Mountain to the New Market Telegraph Station. Welcome to beautiful downtown Strasburg, Virginia. Oh, there's a cool house. Hey, wait a minute, I've got to see that. I've got to see that weather vane.
lovely scenic drive from Strasbourg over the mountains, going up and then going down, to here in Wardensville, West Virginia. There's a Harley rider. I decided to stop for lunch at the Cacapon restaurant. Overlook? Of course! That's pretty much why I came here. So... This is the scenic overlook? What have we got here? Okay. Something tells me these trucks have been here a while. Could be wrong. Is that the scenic overlook? Huh. All right, whatever. This is Moorfield, West Virginia. This is about as far as I go on Corridor H, I think. From here I head back. It's uh, warmer here on the valley floor than it is up in those mountains I traveled to. It's nice and cool and refreshing. Now, Corridor H is a pretty interesting road for motorcycles. You can go as fast as you want there. It is pretty untraveled. And Senator Byrd took a lot of flack for diverting federal funds to pay for it. But to be real honest, I'm kind of glad it's there right now. So anyway, Moorfield, West Virginia. Here's where I turn around. After I clean the bugs off of my visor, that is. What a lovely day! I'm in Wardensville on the way back to Strasbourg. This is the historic, um, well, the visitor center. Just notice that weather vane. Choo choo train. George Washington laid off land here for William Wallace Warden on November 11, 1749. Warden built a stockade fort 
near which members of his family were killed by Indians in 1758, and the fort was burned. It was the scene of skirmishes in 1862 and 63, <clears throat> as it says here, the crossroads of war. During the Civil War, most of Wardensville's 200 residents supported the Confederacy. Southern guerrillas found friends here. On May 7, 1862, Union Colonel Stephen W. Downey arrived here with a mixed force of infantry and cavalry searching for guerrilla leader Captain Umbaugh. He was found and killed. On May 30, 31, 1862, the largest number of troops who entered Wardenville during the war, almost 20,000 men under General Fremont, marched by in a steady rain. Fremont and his men were returning to the Shenandoah Valley from which Confederate General Stonewall Jackson had driven them earlier in the month to face him again, and again suffer defeat at Cross Keys in Port Republic on June 8th and 9th. I like this, Population Center. The Population Center of the United States was in present West Virginia four times as it moved westward across the country near Wardensville in 1820 Smoke Hole in 1830, west of Buckhannon in 1840, and near Burning Springs in 1850. So in 1820, this was the population center of the United States of America. I am in Front Royal, Virginia. Uh, it seemed like a good place to stop, get my rear end off the seat for a few minutes, grab a Coke uh, and some cold water. Uh, clean the bugs off my visor. Yeah, today was a really buggy day. Uh, I'm going to take 55 back home instead of uh, 66. 66 is faster. 55 is a lot more scenic. It takes me through interesting little towns. And what's more, I think uh, I'm going to be hitting the Northern Virginia, Fairfax County area during rush hour, so it'll also get me home faster, probably. I really don't feel like sitting in bumper to bumper traffic in Fairfax County today. Let's see if I can avoid it. So anyway, here we are, Front Royal, the gateway to the Shenandoah Valley. Well, that's what they call it. Strasburg calls itself that too. Sitting here in Marshall, Virginia, enjoying a slurpee. Oh, thank heaven for 7 11. <laughs> I am in Haymarket. This gentleman in front of me was following me. Now I'll follow him. intersection at the Manassas Battlefield and there's the stone house one of the landmarks around these parts and maybe you could keep in your lane do you suppose Are you trying to turn right or something no oh, she doesn't know the stone house was used as a hospital after the battle. In fact, there are visible blood stains in one of the wooden floors. I think I read that. Actually, I think I saw that one time. They had the house open during one visit, and a park guy showed me that. This is the intersection of Compton Road and Centerville Road. I planned it so that this is the only traffic I get stuck in. This one stupid intersection. It takes forever to get across. Meanwhile, the guy in a Cadillac is getting busted. Huh, Maryland driver. Oh well. Hi. 
here it is, 4.29 p.m. I left at 8.55, back home. I put 242 miles in the saddle today. This is a valuable test because the question is, can I do that much mileage in a day? Because this would come in handy for planning a trip across the country from Springfield, Virginia to Burbank, California. So yes, I can do that, especially in a touring class Harley with a better seat, bigger frame, more powerful engine and all that. So really good ride. 4.30, and this is a testament to my planning because this is about the time that I plan to be home, somewhere between 4.15 and 4.30. So it worked out great. What a wonderful motorcycle day today was.